Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues Journal Club, your daily dose of health and medical news. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I will be talking about a very interesting research study that was conducted by researchers from the Institute of Genetics and Genomics, Sir Gangaram Hospital, on clinical and genetic profile of children with short stature presenting to a genetic clinic in Northern India, all these children who presented to the hospital's genetic clinic. Normal variation in adult height is largely due to inherited genetic factors. But by contrast, at the extreme of short stature, patients often have changes in one single gene resulting in large effects on the height. Now, in clinically undefined syndromes of short stature with the development delay with dysmorphism chromosomal microarray may be the first investigation of choice. While in the familial or idiopathic short stature, exome sequencing may identify the short stature syndromes. Now, the study that I'm going to talk about today included a total of 455 individuals, 10 months to 16 years of age. This study has been published in the Indian Pediatrics Journal. All these individuals had a height of less than 3rd centile. Only less than 3 out of 100 are shorter than this child. In the present study of approximately 455 patients with short stature, 226 patients required a detailed phenotyping and genetic testing for confirmation of etiology, while 229 were identified on preliminary history or examination and further investigations. 63% of them had proportionate short stature. Of these, 65% were recognizable genetic syndromes such as Turner syndrome, Williams syndrome and even Ras opathies, etc. Now, in clinically undefined syndromes, out of the 226, around 27% had a diagnosis that could be made by karyotype chromosome microarray as well as the exome sequencing. Now, balance of 37% children had disproportionate short stature, meaning that either the upper or the lower part of the body is usually short. Lysosomal storage syndrome was found in 45%, which were identified by enzyme analysis in 86.8% individuals. While the skeletal dysplasias found in 44% individuals were identified by skeletal survey in 89% of the cases and unclassified were 8%. So all these put together were the results of the study. So we have with us today Dr. Ratna Duapuri, the Chairperson, Institute of Medical Genetics and Genomics at Sir Gangaram Hospital, who joined us to tell us more about this research. So firstly, ma'am, if you could just tell our viewers as to what led you to carry out this study. What was the objective behind it? So the objective behind this was we see these children commonly in the OPD. We realize that their diagnosis has not been made. We wanted to increase the awareness of these disorders in pediatricians because Indian Pediatrics is the prime journal of pediatricians. The aim behind this study because if you don't have a definite diagnosis, then you kind of like miss out on confirming the diagnosis. So this is the only way that a definite diagnosis can be made is by publishing your work. So how do you think your study will help out the healthcare professionals in general? You know, in the table that we have provided within that, in detail talked about what are the syndromes that you can identify in this cohort. Okay, what are the genetic disorders that are identified in this cohort? And what is the test that requires to be done? So that is the, the aim of this paper because they all are a large percentage of these disorders can be treated, recurrence can be prevented. So that is why we have said that, that you have to do a good clinical examination. Based on that clinical examination, order the appropriate test and on the diagnosis that is made, then counsel the family which includes informing them about the disease, what is the outcome, prognosis, is there a recurrence risk if they plan another pregnancy. That was the whole theme behind this paper. One last question ma'am. So in your study, what are the key findings that you would want to highlight on? So in the study, we found that we had a large percentage proportionately short. Because the disproportionately short children are identified more easily and a diagnosis is made more easily. So, in the proportionately short patient, 
in them also just on a clinical examination we were able to recognize what the symptom is for the others because clinically they were not differentiated we had to do specific tests so the thing is that we must examine them and work them up to the end and that's the main theme behind this the message is that do a good clinical evaluation and then based on that clinical evaluation then we take it forward on how we confirm a diagnosis using the appropriate test so as you correctly mentioned that it all comes down to the first step which is the proper diagnosis of the patient isn't it which is clinical as well as testing so these days people are doing a lot of testing without looking at the patient so that should not be done thank you so much ma'am for your valuable inputs Thank you so much. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe, and press the bell icon.